Today I'm going to talk a little about getting started in DCC and what to look for. As you probably already know, DCC is short for Digital Command Control. It's basically a system where digital commands are sent to the locomotives through the rails. So it's a system for controlling locomotives on a model railroad layout. The older style layouts used a block control system. Each had its own power pack and a complex control panel. This was to keep each locomotive electrically separated from the others. The difference with DCC is that it allows independent control of multiple locomotives within the same block. So more than one locomotive can occupy the same electrical section of track. DCC also allows for multiple operators to control multiple locomotives at the same time, and even in the same block or electrical division. Doing this would be difficult, if not impossible, with an analog setup. Just to make it clear, an analog system runs on DC power. So, if you were operating an analog, you would only be allowed one train per block at any one time. Now with a DCC system, this can be all one electrical block, but you can have several locos, each operated individually at the same time. The possibilities are endless because you could run several locomotives on your own all at once. Or you could have a couple of friends each operating a loco at a time. Or they each could run several locos at a time. That's pretty cool. Now if you already have a layout wired with block control and you want to switch to DCC, you can change over. And if you only have just one DCC equipped locomotive, you can run a single non-DCC, that's analog, locomotive together with your DCC locos. Not every system can do this, but many can. Now another advantage of DCC is that it provides for digital control of turnouts as well as signaling. You can add whistles and sounds to your locos and make them really come to life. Perhaps one thing I should mention is that you don't need a computer to operate with DCC. You really only need a computer for signaling or with a few of the do-it-yourself systems. As a rule, none of the commercial systems need a computer, so you won't need to do any programming apart from configuring the address of your locomotives. I'll come on to that in a minute. But first, let's take a look at what a DCC system consists of. There are five main parts. The first is the command station. It's the harder brains of DCC. That's why you don't need a computer, because it is the computer that sends out messages to all other parts of the DCC system. Now, the command station is important, so you need to buy the right one depending on your needs. You need to decide what type of throttle controls you prefer and how much you will want to expand your system in the future. Some systems combine a command station and a booster into a single unit. But I better explain about boosters. A booster does what the name implies. It boosts signals from the command station into power applied to the track through the wiring to the rails. Most boosters will need an external power supply. You'll remember I mentioned you could run several locos at the same time with DCC. Well, how many locos you can run depends on the amp rating of the booster and on the power. You can buy some brands of boosters separately, and some you control using a different brand of command station. So you do have options. That's just a sample of what you'll get when you join Robert Anderson's Online Model Train Club. Each month, you'll get access to more and more helpful tutorials, handy model train tips, answers to those difficult model railway questions. You'll learn step-by-step -step all about DCC, bench work and scenery construction, the secret to scratch building structures, insider tips on detailing and weathering, maintenance and repairs, overcoming all the problems that you may have with your layout, and so much more. It's all waiting for you when you join Robert's Online Model Train Club. <laughs>